My sermon is this is not a cult, okay? Now, who here has heard from family members, friends, loved ones that this is a cult? All right, a lot of people, okay? And if I ask that question on Sunday, there'd be even more hands. I think almost everyone here has heard that this is a cult. And basically, the reason the title of my sermon, This is Not a Cult, is because this is not a cult. And I plan on proving that from the Bible and uh, basically just comparing um, what I've seen. I'm going to start a timer. I forgot. Um, I'm basically going to show from the Bible that this is not a cult. And I'm also going to compare with other well-known cults why this is not a cult. And people who say this is a cult obviously don't care about the truth. It's just that simple. And um, so that's what the sermon is going to be about. And the first point I'm going to make is here in 2 Peter. If this is a cult, then our pastor is a false prophet. If this is a cult, then our pastor must be a false prophet. So let's see if our, our pastor is a false prophet. So in, uh, sec- in uh, 2 Peter 2, this is a very famous pa- uh, passage of scripture talking about false prophets. I think Hector read it very well. We're not going to go through the whole chapter But it says in verse 1, it says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. And that's my first point. I would like to ask all of you if anybody can show me a damnable heresy that Pastor Manley has taught. I'll wait a minute. (laughs) Just one. Internet? No? Just one. All we need is one. And right there, he would be in violation of the scripture. He'd be a false prophet. But the thing is, is that our pastor has not taught any damnable heresies. And therefore, that's just one thing that they can't say against us. So let's go to the next point. Let's go. Let's keep reading. It says, so privilege shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. I think they 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 can't prove that Pastor Manley has denied the Lord that bought him. (laughs) I mean, that'd be crazy. That'd be a damnable heresy. But the thing is, our pastor doesn't teach anything like that. Our pastor believes that Jesus Christ is the only reason why he's in the position that he's in. He countlessly preaches about how God pulled him out of the miry clay and how without God, he wouldn't be anything. Without him, he wouldn't have his family. Without him, he wouldn't have his wife. And it's just funny to me that people will call this a call. I think I've already disproved it here in just a few seconds. But our pastor is not a false prophet. He teaches that Jesus died for his sins, that he, that he resurrected on the third day. And so far, I don't see anything that he's violated in the scripture. And then it says, if we keep reading, it says, And many shall follow, follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, uh, whose judgment now of long time lingereth not in their damnation slumbereth not. Where's the Pastor Manly t-shirts? If this is a cult, where's his book? Where's the book he's trying to sell back there? I don't see it. Point number one is our pastor is not a false prophet. And right here, I mean, and we're going to see, we're going to go back through these points and I'm going to compare to other cults that have existed and still exist where they're in violation of this. Their pastor, their leader is a false prophet. They don't believe the Bible. They don't believe anything that the Bible says, actually, and I'll show that to you here in a second. But he doesn't, he doesn't sell us things. He doesn't try to get rich off of us. And he teaches the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for the only way of salvation. He cannot be a false prophet if we just read that. I mean, it's clear. But anyways, let's keep going. Not only does he not teach any damnable heresies, but he also teaches all the fundamentals of Christianity on top of not preaching any heresies. So he's not like Joel Osteen where he'll just like leave a whole bunch of stuff out. Yeah. You know, he's not like Rick Warren who will just leave a whole bunch of stuff out. It's not necessarily what they say that's wrong. It's that they don't teach all the fundamentals. They don't teach everything that the Bible says. And our pastor not only doesn't teach damnable heresies, but he also preaches the full counts of God. Amen. He teaches that we're saved uh, once for all. He, he believes in once saved, always saved. He believes the Trinity. He believes that there is three in one, like the Bible says. He doesn't teach in oneness. He teaches grace through faith, faith alone for salvation. He teaches the deity of Christ. He teaches one gospel, not three. He teaches one authority, the King James Bible. 
He teaches that there's an eternal, fiery hell, yes. and he teaches baptism by immersion. He teaches all the fundamentals that I could think of, <laughs> and if anyone can think of any other ones, I'm sure he teaches it. Yes. The Bible says that according to the scripture, he's A-OK, -okay. all right? But let's go to 1 John 4. Let's go to 1 John 4. Another way we can prove that our pastor, our leader, is not a false prophet, I think is a, this is a good verse for it. 1 John, uh, 1 John 4, 1 through 6, it said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God, Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Is there any question that our pastor believes that Jesus Christ come in the flesh? Is there any question that our pastor believes the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for salvation? I don't think there's any question about it. And anybody who says that we're a cult, honestly, just doesn't care about the truth. Honestly, doesn't even care about looking into what we believe or even watching just one sermon. All they care about is that we call Oprah Winfrey a windbag. <laughs> All they care right. about is that we sit there and say that homos deserve to die according to Leviticus 2013. And it's funny because they're like, oh, you believe what the Bible says on that. And you're like, yeah, I do. It's funny because I do believe Leviticus 13 or 2013 is right. Amen. But you're a cult because you believe that. It's ridiculous. Amen. It's stupid because all they have to do is see whether or not our, our preacher is a Christian preacher if, if he's actually who he says he is. And according to the Bible, so far he's A-OK. -okay. So go to 1 Timothy 3. This is the qualifications of a bishop. Let's see if our pastor's qualified. That's a big one. If our pastor's not qualified, pretty sure he's a false prophet. But pretty sure he's qualified. Let's check. Let's just see if our pastor, Pastor Manley, is qualified. 1 Peter 3, starting in verse 1, it says, This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth the good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. She's standing, she's sitting right there. I don't think he's ever had another wife. Let's keep reading. Uh, vigilant. I mean, he's got a lot of guns. <laughs> No, but he, he believes that he, I mean, he believes the whole counsel of God. He's vigilant, all right? Sober. Miss Crystal, is he sober? All right. Of good behavior. Miss Crystal, is he good behavior? <laughs> Given to hospitality. I know that firsthand. I'm not going to tell you, but I know that firsthand. Very given to hospitality. Apt to teach. Who here since yeah. going to Old Path has learned something? All right, let's keep reading. Amen. Um, not given to wine. She just said he was sober. Not a striker. When was the last time Pastor really got in a fist fight? Long time, right? <laughs> I don't know if ever, right? But anyways, not greedy of filthy lucre. Yeah. All right? Patient. Not a brawler. Not covetous. All right? One that ruleth well his own house. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. I mean, we see their kids all the time. Very well-behaved kids. Very well-behaved. You know? <laughs> Is Crystal's laughing over there? Very well-behaved. All right. Not a novice. Nothing shows me that Pastor Manley's a novice. I don't know about you. Man knows a lot of Bible. Yeah. Lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he have... Uh, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into the reproach of the sayer of the devil. So we just went through all the qualifications of a bishop, and so far our pastor's A-OK. -okay. He, he meets the qualifications. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Anyways, anyways he meets all the qualifications of a bishop, and I hope I was able to prove to you, I mean, I don't think anyone thought here that our pastor was a false prophet, but anyone that might be listening, I mean, we have family... We all have family that listens and thinks we're in a cult. And I hope this first point can at least show them something, that we're not a cult because our leader isn't a cult leader. He is a Bible-believing Christian. It's ridiculous to call us a cult. I mean, you wouldn't call CBC, the Fun Center, a cult. I mean, you wouldn't call 
you know, uh, any other Christian a cult. They only want to call us a cult because they don't like what we say. They only want to call us a cult because, and I'll get into all the things that they say, but anyways, that was my first point. Our pastor is not a false prophet. He believes the Bible. He believes all the fundamentals of Christianity. And not only that, he doesn't teach any Danville heresies. He's not trying to get rich off of us. I think it's very clear that we have a genuine man of God who wants to teach us the Bible. I think it's very clear. So my second point is we have one authority. Okay? Go to Matthew 4.4. 4. Matthew 4.4. 4. And the reason that was my first point is because we're going to get into some real cults. Yeah. And the only way they're a cult is if their leader is a false prophet. I mean, that's his, that's his only way you can become a cult. Okay? You can't be a cult if you're a Christian. It doesn't make sense. If you believe what the Bible says, congratulations, you're a Christian. You're not a cult. Amen. All right? But go to Matthew 4, 4. Not there yet. The Bible teaches that we have one authority... And this is very important because every cult that I looked into while making this sermon, they do not have one authority. They have multiple authorities. That's right. All right. They don't have just one surefire. This is what we believe in yeah. one place. Right. They have a whole bunch of authorities. Yeah. And we'll get into that in a second. But Matthew 4, 4 says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And turn to Romans 3. Romans 3, 4. Romans 3, 4, passage we use often. But I think, I think this point is the main point that needs to be hit on because the only way that we can be a cult is if we don't believe that this is our final authority. Okay? I cannot find a single cult. I looked everywhere online for the past couple, I mean, all day. I can't find one cult that believes this is a final authority. You want to know why? Because they're all Christians. They're not a cult. But anyways, the Bible says in Romans 3, 4, it says, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. See, we don't believe in a, in a, in a man, okay? Our pastor, yeah, he's a great leader. He is a authority, but he's not the authority, all right? This is our authority, we go by what this says, and I guarantee that everyone in this room, if I asked if Pastor Manley got into weird false doctrine, we'd all leave. Yeah. Okay? Yes. But he's not. Amen. Our pastor teaches sound doctrine. Yes. And, but if he started going off into some weird stuff, wanted to take us to Guyana to live on a compound in the middle of the jungle, yeah. pretty sure I wouldn't go. <laughs> pretty sure none of us would go. But I don't think that's going to happen. Right. All right? But the Bible says... God forbid, let God be true, but every man a liar. Okay? Because we ought to obey God rather than man. All right? And, uh, again, please show me a cult that believes this is their final authority. You can't find one. You can't find a single one. And you want to, it's because they're Christians. And then look, let's, let's read what it says. Let's see why God is true and every man's a liar. Because it says, God forbid, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. I believe, I mean, you know, in the context of what this sermon's about, being a cult, this is what it's saying. It says, thou mightest be justified in thy sayings. See, when we say that the Bible says that there is a capital punishment and deserves death, the reason we can say that is because God's true. Amen. And every man is a liar. Amen. All right? When we, when, when we have family members that say, oh, you're in a cult because you believe that? That's crazy. You're sick. I say, God's true. Yeah. Every man's a liar. You're a liar. Amen. You're the one who's wrong. Right. The Bible says this. Yes. God says this. And it says, yeah. it says, if you keep reading, it says that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings. When we say what we want to say, when we say what the Bible believes, we're justified in our sayings because we believe God is true. And every man is a liar. All right. The only reason we can say without a doubt what the Bible says is true is because God's true and every man's a liar. It's that simple. But with these cults, with real cults, God is not true and every man. What's the opposite of a liar? A truther? It's ridiculous. 
All right, but these guys, they have they, these cults, they have a false prop, they have false prophets where their false prophet is true, but the word of God, you know, it's kind of over here, and it's not, it's not what the Bible teaches. And then it says that thou mightest overcome when thou art judged. When they say you're a cult, say, well, you know, God doesn't think so. We can overcome. <laughs> God says that he agrees, you know. <laughs> But that's what it's saying. It says, mightest overcome when thou art judged. When I'm judged, when people point at me and say I'm a cult, I say, I don't care. Call me a cult. Yeah. You know, I believe what the Bible says and you don't. We'll see when we get to heaven. Yeah. But anyways, uh, point 2.5, uh, one way to heaven. Did I already say that? No, I don't think so. Point 2.5, one way to heaven. John 14, 6. Everybody yes. knows it. I am the way, the truth, and life. No man comes to the Father but by me. There's only one way to heaven, okay? And it's not works. It's not kiss the Pope's big toe. It's one thing. It's believe on Jesus Christ. Trust Jesus Christ to take you to heaven. And a lot of these cults, they believe in Jesus Christ, but they also believe in another way to heaven. They have two ways to heaven, really. And again, can't find a single cult that believes Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. You can't find one. Because they're Baptist church down the street. That's why. But point number three is out in the open. I tried to start these all with the O. Out in the open. See, when, uh, when you look into cults, you find out that everything they believe is kind of hidden. All right? And it's just true. I mean, if we just go through examples, let's see the Catholic church. If you look at the Catholic church, half of them are pedophiles. You don't even know it. And if you go to the Catholic Church, you'll find the papacy exists. Yeah. And you'll find that there's a whole bunch of closed doors where people don't know what they're saying. You have no idea why the Pope was elected. You have no clue. You're just supposed to blindly follow the Catholic Church and say, yep, I agree. That's the vicar of Christ, which is blasphemy. Yeah. But let's look at another one, the Mormons. You know, the secret gold tablets. <coughs> the tablets that he found in the earth. It's crazy. The secret handshakes to get to heaven. You know, the quorum of the 12 apostles. Anyone heard of that? Exactly. Nobody's heard of that. President of the Mormon church. Does anyone know that the Mormon church had a president? Nobody. See, they keep things secret. Yeah. All right? And let's go to the next one. You know, Jim Jones, he's like the big cult leader. He's like the guy. If you, you know that where we get that saying, don't drink the Kool-Aid? That's this guy. <laughs> Not joking. He took his people to the jungle. He killed them all with Kool-Aid. No joke. But uh, wow. anyways, I'm going to read a quote from him in just a second. But let's look at the Jehovah's Witnesses. The Watchtower. If you look hard into it, they have no clue where their Bible translation even came from. It's just a couple of guys from the Watchtower. It's not even like a legitimate theological guy that put it all together it's just the watchtower their bible translation and you don't have to quote me for it just look it up they have no idea where the jehovah's witness bible even came from it's just they trust the watchtower the watchtower is true they have multiple authorities and that's another point but when when what well, the reason i say that is because we're out in the open everything that we believe is on youtube we record it all all right? I mean, the, the, the main point why this is not a cult is you can literally see everything we believe. Everything. Everything. And not only that, no one's keeping you here. You can leave whenever you want. It's ridiculous. These people think we're a cult. They just don't care. They don't care about what the truth is. They don't care about what the Bible says. They don't even care to look into a legitimate cult and to find out if what they do matches up with what we do. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. And anyone that calls us a cult is a fool themselves because they just don't care about what the truth is. So my three points were our pastor is not a false prophet. In order for this to be a cult, our pastor must be a false prophet. He has to be. Or else he's just a normal prophet. He's just an actual prophet. <laughs> Simple as that. We have one authority, and that is the King James Bible. We do have, we have Pastor Manley. He is an authority, like I said. But this is our final authority. This is what we go by as Christians. And our pastor, as far as I know, doesn't violate or teach anything against what the Bible says. Point number three is uh, 
We're out in the open. You can find everything that we believe on the internet. We're not scared to tell you exactly what we believe. I will tell anybody that calls me a cult, I'll tell them exactly what we believe. I'll tell them everything. I'll just lay it all on the table. Obviously, I'll try to give them the gospel, but I'll lay everything out on the table. I'll tell them, oh, you believe homos die? And he's die? yeah, here, this is what the Bible says. Yeah. You know, you believe that homos are pedophiles? Yeah, I'll show you what the Bible says. You know, you believe that adulterers should be put to death? Yeah, yeah. here's what the Bible says. Yeah. It's that simple. We're open door. I mean, we, we, you can ask me anything. You can ask pastor anything. You can ask Miss Crystal anything. And we'll tell you exactly what we believe. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. Show me a cult that does that. I don't think you'll be able to find one. So with these points in mind, with these exact points in mind, our pastor's not a false prophet, one authority, uh, three, uh, or sorry, out, out in the open, our point number three. With these exact points in mind, let's see how actual cults stack up. Oh, my timer stopped. Anyways, <laughs> that's great. Our, uh, with these exact points in mind, let's see how actual cults stack up to these scrutinies, these, these, uh, these points here. It said, so the first point, our pastor's not a false prophet. Let's talk about Joseph Smith. All right? This guy taught many Daniel heresies. I don't even have time to go over all of them. But uh, the first and most important Daniel heresy is that he taught a works-based salvation. He taught that you had to keep the commandments to go to heaven. Good on you, bud. Good luck. But the thing is that we know that the Bible says we are not saved by works. That's the most important one. I don't want to get into everything he taught because that's a whole other sermon. Jim Jones, this is the quote I wanted to quote you guys. This is what Jim Jones said, the guy who made people drink deathly Kool-Aid. What you need to believe in is what you can see. If you see me as a friend, I'll be your friend. If you see me as your father, I'll be your father. If you see me as your savior, I'll be your savior. If you see me as your God, I'll be your God. Pastor Manley ever said anything like that? Anything even close? No, this guy is a for real legitimate cult leader. And guess what? You know, Pastor Anderson's not my God. Pastor Anderson's not my Savior. Pastor Manley is not my Savior. Pastor Manley is not my God for sure. Okay, Jesus is my only Savior. Amen. Jesus is my only God. He's the only one that paid my price. Yes. Nobody else. Right. right there, we're not a cult. Because Jesus is my only Savior. All right? Not these false prophet weirdos. Charles Taze Russell, the Jehovah's Witnesses, he founded the Jehovah's Witnesses. Let's see the damnable heresies he's taught. Yeah. He denies hell. Yeah. He denies the deity of Christ. He doesn't even believe Jesus is God. Yeah. Yeah. He, I believe even, I don't know if the Jehovah's Witnesses hold to this now, but he denied the Holy Spirit. It's like, does he even believe in God? <laughs> you know? Right. But anyways... Uh, those are just a whole bunch of damn. I, I think those are just obvious. I don't even need to show you scripture on those, you know. Let's see what the Pope teaches, because yeah, the Catholic Church is a cult. Yeah. It's a giant cult. Right. Just cults aren't just small groups of people, folks. Cults can be huge. Cults can have millions of people in them, and the Catholic Church is a cult. Right. Amen. And here's why: Amen. this man literally accepts worship. Yes. Pastors taught on it a whole bunch of times. Yes. You can watch videos on YouTube of him, literally someone bowing to his feet. Yeah. Tell me that's not a cult leader. Yeah. Sounds exactly what Jim Jones said. If you think about it, Jim Jones said, I'll be your savior. I'll be your father. This guy sounds just like the Pope. Yeah. Anyways, um, Pope literally means father. Mm -hmm. Literally means father. Matthew 23 says, call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. We don't have any other father, okay? Our father is in heaven, not this guy. These are real cults with real false prophets, all right? And I don't think that our pastor even is close to any of that, not even close. But one authority, let's see where these cults stack up. Remember, we have one authority. It's the King James Bible. Let's see what these cults say. Mormonism, they have four. All right, the Pearl of Great Price, mm -hmm. Doctrines and Covenants, yeah. the Book of Mormon, then the King James Bible. These people, 
are a cult. Amen. Okay? They don't believe the final authority of the Bible. Amen. They believe in these other things, the Book of Mormon. If you look at these things, Brother Char- Charlie actually told I didn't know those things even existed. But uh, the Pearl of Great Price is weird. But anyways, uh, let's look at Jim Jones. We just read his quote. I don't even think we need to get into that. Jehovah's Witnesses, um, they have the Watchtower Society. Anything that comes out of the Watchtower is right. I already, I already explained that. Catholic Church. Do you know the Pope can speak ex cathedra? Yeah. It means he's infallible. Yeah. When he's in his chair with his hat, yeah. he's infallible. He can trump what the Bible says. That's what the Catholics teach. And you cannot be a Catholic and deny the Pope. Amen. You just can't. The Pope is also, the doctrine is that he's the vicar of Christ. He is the, he is the placeholder for Christ while he is here or while Jesus is in heaven. He is the vicar of Christ. Just look into it. Guys, he's a cult leader. There's been many of them, and they've lasted forever. Um, let's go to the second point. Go to, wait, no, I'm going backwards. Going backwards here. Oh, the, the, the out in the open. I already explained that. These cults hide everything. Okay? If you want to look into what we believe, just go to YouTube. Simple as that. Just go to YouTube. Go to our website. You can see everything that we believe. It's out in the open. You can find it all. But I guarantee you, if you look at these cults that I just mentioned, you'll be hard-pressed to find anything when it gets to the higher-ups. You know, we don't know exactly what the Pope is doing. We have no idea. Um, But I already went into that. I already explained all of that. So let's, let's go through why people think we are a cult. Does anyone have any idea when I started preaching? No? Nobody? Okay. I think, I mean, I, I think it's been a good time, right? Anyways, good amount of time. All right. Let's see why these people call us a cult. All right. This is, why, this is what I've heard. So you might have heard something different, but this is just what I heard from my family, my friends, and then one person on YouTube. Um, you're hateful. Yeah. Who, who has said? Who has heard that we're a cult because we're hateful? All right. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only one. I thought. I mean, I heard. I thought the people would have different, different reasons why people call us a cult. But we'll see if they line up or not. Go to Romans 12. Romans 12 says in verse 9, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Does anyone know what abhor means? Hate. 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 It's another word for hate. Okay? It says, let's just read again. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. See, if you don't hate things, the reason why it says that your love is in dissimulation, if you hate, if you don't hate things, is because you can't hate or you can't love something without hating another thing. I mean, I've heard, I'm sure we've all heard the sermons. You can't hate the, or you can't love the flowers without hating the weeds. All right, you can't love children and pedophiles. Amen. It's just not possible. That's right. All right. Amen. You can't love people without telling them the truth about what the Bible says. It's just not possible. If you love people, you're going to tell them what the Bible says. If they don't want to hear it, that's up to them. But the Bible says some pretty hard things. The Bible says a lot of things that a lot of people don't agree with. But if we love people, we're going to tell them anyway. If we love people, then we're going to preach what needs to be preached. We, need to, we will say what needs to be said, and we won't leave anything out. We'll just say it. And that's exactly what I believe, why everyone's even here at this church. I mean, we come here because all the other churches aren't doing it. We come here because we love people, because our pastor loves people enough to tell them the truth. I don't come here because, you know, it's the funnest church. There's a playhouse for the kids. You know, there's two TV screens or, you know, we sing great music. I come here because, because there's truth here. Because the person standing behind the pulpit loves me enough to say, 
this is what the Bible says. And that's all I care about. I just care about what the Bible says. And I'm going to go where the Bible's being preached, Amen. where the truth is being preached. And sadly, a lot of Christians will sit there and say, oh, you're supposed to love everybody. You're supposed to cuddle with pedophiles. No, it's ridiculous. And honestly, if, if you don't see what I mean when I say you can't love children and pedophiles at the same time, you might want to, I don't know, you, do, you might want to have a reality check or check yourself into like a psych ward because you can't love both. You just can't. Amen. You either hate, you either love children or you love pedophiles. Which one is it? Okay? You need to make that decision. Do I love the truth or do I love liars? Do I love what the Bible says or do I love what false teachers will say? That I have to love everyone. You can't love children and love abortion. Amen. You can't love... Right. You, I mean, let's... Think of one, Dion. What, what's one you can't love and, and hate the same? What's one you can't love and all at the same time? You can't, you can't love shoes and love bare feet on rocks. Hate or hate. hate yeah. What did Dion say? Everyone heard it. But <laughs> the thing is, though, is you can't, you can't love. If you love something, you're going to hate whatever is against that thing. Right. And you know what? I hate. I hate when people say there's another way to heaven. Yeah. I hate it. Right. All right? It, it gets my blood boiling. Yes. I hate it. And when people like Oprah Winfrey or Joel Osteen or yeah. Rick Warren, Billy Graham, when I hear those people say, well, Jesus isn't the only way to heaven, I hate them because the Bible says that there is only one way to heaven. Yes. And guess what they're doing? They're leading people straight to hell. Yes. They're basically the, yeah. the, 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 the person at the front door yeah. of the club, just like checking people in, <laughs> yeah. just leading people right. in. Man. They're false prophets, and they're leading people straight to hell. And, and people will say, well, it's not my business what they do. Well, it's maybe because you don't talk to enough people about Jesus. Because if you did, guess what would happen? You'd run into people, and they're like, well, I believe there's multiple ways to heaven. And you wonder where they got that from. They didn't just think of that. They got that from people who hate God. They got that from people who don't know the Bible yet try to teach it. That's right. They got that from false prophets like Joel Osteen and Oprah Windbags. I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. Yeah. That woman, she is, I believe she's a reprobate. But anyways, she teaches that Jesus is not the only way to heaven. Right. And whenever she says that... Amen. Man, that, that gets me worked up. That it gives me so mad. Because there's somebody that I know who literally calls us a cult because we called Oprah Winfrey a windbag. It's like the woman says that Jesus is the only way to heaven. What do you not understand? How do you not hate her? She teaches and leads people straight to hell. If you love people, guess what you'll do? You'll hate when people say that. You'll hate when people say there's another way to heaven. If you love people, it's as clear as day. It's that, it's that simple. If you love people, you will hate other people who lead people to hell. Is there any quorum against that? I think that's what, I think that's right. I love, with, let's read the verse. Let your love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Do you think it's evil when Oprah Winfrey says that other, there's other ways to heaven? Who here thinks that's evil? Okay. What about when Joel Osteen says the same thing? Who thinks that's evil? It's wicked. The guy's wicked. The guy's a false prophet. What about when someone says that, that homos, pedophiles, should be integrated into society? Is that evil? It's super evil. Super wicked. Should we love that? According to this verse, no. We should abhor it. We should hate it. We should want to correct it by preaching the Bible, by saying what the Bible says. But anyways, let's keep going. Let's, this is another thing that I've heard people say why we're a cult. You're judgmental. You're so judgmental. That kind of goes into the hateful thing, right? Oh, judge not. Judge not. Just keep reading. But 
Let's go to a verse. Um, let's go to 1 Corinthians 2. I'm not even going to go to that judge not because it's so silly. I'm going to show you that other verses teach that we should judge. 1 Corinthians and what we should judge. Because we shouldn't be judging off the appearance. We should be judging righteous judgment. That's what the Bible says. But 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, it says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Verse 15, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. The Bible says the spiritual man judges all things. You remember the verse that we, we just read earlier? It said, try the Spirit, Amen. see whether or not it's of God. Yeah. How are you supposed to do that if you can't judge? That's right. It's just so dumb. The Bible doesn't even teach anything close to just make no judgment calls. Make none. You can't say whether or not Dion's shirt's black. You can't do it. That's judging. You can't do it. It's just so dumb. The Bible says there's a right thing to judge. There's a right way to judge. Yeah. And yeah, I'm not supposed to judge off the appearance, but when someone says yeah. something that the Bible strictly, clearly teaches against, I'm yeah. going to judge that person, yes. and I'm going to say, hey, that's wrong. Yeah. That's wicked. Yeah. That's what the Bible says to judge. All right, go to 1 Corinthians 5. Maybe it's on the same page oh, yeah. for some of you. Yeah. It says, for verily... As absent in body, this is Paul. First off, let me give you some preface. First, First Corinthians 5 is where we get all of our church discipline doctrine. Someone was fornicating in the church. It was a big sin. And Paul is letting them know what he thinks real quick. He says, for verily, as absent in body. So he's not even there. He's not even at the church of Corinth. But present in spirit have judged already. He's not even there. But he judges already. He's so against the fornication going on in the church. He says, I'm not even there, but I'm judging already. And then he says, as though I were present concerning him that hath so done this deed. He's judging the guy who's fornicating. Yeah. And then he tells him to kick him out of the church. Yeah. I mean, if that's not judging, I don't know what is. <laughs> and the Bible says, we're okay to judge. We're, we're, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> we're okay to judge. The Bible says we can judge, but you got to do it right. You don't want to be a hypocrite. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't be right for Paul to say, I'm judging that person. He's in fornication. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't be right if Paul did that, right. but he's probably not in fornication. We know that Paul wasn't even married, never got married, yeah. but we're not supposed to judge hypocritically. If we're doing the same thing that we're pointing at yeah. somebody yeah. for doing, yeah. then we're a hypocrite. Yes. That's the type of judging the Bible says not do, okay? And then the Bible also says that we judge righteous judgment, all right? When someone is fornicating in the church, someone has to be able to say, you can't come here anymore. Either you get married or you can't come here. Someone's got to make that judgment call. Someone's got to be able to say, this is what the Bible says. Here's what we're going to do. You're wrong. Stop doing that, whatever. But the Bible teaches we can be judgmental. But I've heard many countless times, oh, you're judgmental, you're a cult. Well, how about you just read the verses I just, I just gave you? And tell me you're, we're a cult. Right. All right, next point. You're so different. Why are you so different? We didn't raise you this way. Yeah. Who's ever heard that? Yes. We didn't raise you this way. You're not supposed to be so judgmental and hateful. You're in a cult. As they, they say, you're, not so, you're, so, you're so judgmental now. You're so hateful. Yeah. Yet they just called us a cult. Exactly. It's like, what the heck? <laughs> How is that not judgmental and hateful? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Go to John 17. John 17. <laughs> I just think that's so funny. Yeah. You're so judgmental. You're so hateful. You're in a cult. It's like, you're judgmental. You're hateful. <laughs> What's that saying? I'm rubber, you're glue. Bounce off to me, six to you. You're a cult. Anyways, John 17. John 17. And I'm almost done. John 17. 
You're so different. That's the point. John 17. Oh, whoops. No, yeah, I'm right. John 17, 14. I have given thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So we are supposed to be different. We're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. Okay? We are supposed to go into the world and preach the gospel. That's why he says, look, let's, keep, let's read that one more time. Verse 15, I pray that not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. Why do you think that is? So we can get people saved. We're supposed to be in the world so we can be a light to the world and show people what Jesus did for them. Yes. But we're not supposed to be of the world. We don't want to be a reproach to people. We don't want to be a stumbling block to people. So we're not going to listen to the world's music. We're not going to watch the world's TV programs. Right. We're not going to look right. at the things that the world looks at on the internet. We are going to be separate from the world. We're going to be different than how we used to be so we can get people saved. Amen. That's the whole point. Amen. We are not of the world so we can be used of God. Right. We're different so that God can use us. We're different so that when we knock on someone's door, they, they take us serious. Yeah. Or when we're at work and we're cussing with the coworkers yeah. and we're joking the same jokes as the coworkers, and then we try to give them the gospel. They're like, are you serious? They're not going to take me seriously. But if I'm different, if I have a way about me that is of God, they're going to take me serious. Or if I help them or if I care about their life or if I tell them I'm praying for them, they might be more susceptible to listen to what I have to say. We're in the world for one reason. See, one day he is going to take us out of the world. One day we're not going to be in the world. One day we're going to get raptured. But right now, he says, I pray that you don't take him out of the world so we can get people saved. And the only way you can get people saved is, obviously, if you know what the Bible says and you can show them, but to be different, to show people that, I, you know, there is a, you know, we don't believe in lifestyle evangelism, but some of that is not necessarily wrong. We should be good so that, Others might glorify our Father in heaven. That's what the Bible says. I don't remember the exact verse. But we do good things so that people will look at us and say, hmm, they're different. You know, they're always happy. They're always cheerful. They don't cuss. They don't say the same jokes. And then one day, we'll plant the question on them. And they'll be like, hmm, maybe this is what they're, why they're so different. There is a little bit of truth in that, but you still got to ask the question. Are you 100% sure that if you die today, you go to heaven? Yeah. You still got to ask the question. Lifestyle evangelism is a fraud. You can't, no one's going to jump in your boat, yeah. maybe once in a lifetime. But most of the time, you still got to ask that question. You're a light to the world, then you ask the question. Moving on. Titus 2. Titus 2. So the reason I'm bringing up these points, what these people say, why they say it? Be, well, they say that they say it because they think we're a cult. They say, "Oh, you're hateful because you're in a cult. You're judgmental because you're in a cult. You're so different because you're in a cult." And the reason I bring this up is because the Bible. We have a basis in the Bible for all of those things. We're hateful because the Bible says to hate evil. We're judgmental because the Bible says we judge all things. You know. We're different because God wants us in the world, but not of the world. He wants to use us. And then Titus 2. This is the same point. Oh, I'm going backwards. Hold on. I'm all mixed up. Titus 2, verse 14, it says, Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people. Peculiar means different. Zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. This is a great verse, especially when people, when, we're, when we get down and out because people think we're in a cult. I, I, you know, I don't always let it get to me, but sometimes when it, it hits home. When people say we're in a cult, 
You know, sometimes, you know, it gets at my, it gets at my yeah. flesh. I know we're not in a cult, but to hear it from people that I love, it hurts sometimes. Who knows what I'm talking about? It hurts sometimes. They're not right by any means, but it hurts. And the reason I want to show you this verse is because the main reason I believe people think we're cult is because we're so different. Because we don't have a rock and roll band up here. We don't have, you know, the, the stage and the lights and the smoke. We don't have all of that stuff. And not only that, our pastor yells and screams and smacks stuff. And they don't understand it. We're so different. And I think that's why people think we're a cult. You know, we knock doors on our, one of our days off. You know, we tell people about Jesus on our day off. You know, that's why I think a lot of people think we're in a cult. But let's read this verse, these verses again. It says, Who gave himself for us that might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. So he did all this so obviously he could redeem us, so we could be a peculiar people, so that he could use us, and that we could be zealous for good works. And it says, These things speak and exhort. Okay? And rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. So he's saying he, he wants us to be a peculiar people. He wants us to be different. But he says, let no man despise you. Do it because God wants you to. Do it because God redeemed you. Because he bought you. Because he wants you to be zealous of good works. And don't let people despise you. Don't let it get to you. Don't let it get under your skin when your family calls you a cult. Just do it because the Lord wants you to do it. Do it because the Bible says so. Let no man despise thee. It's, I mean, it's, it, that was really encouraging to me for this week because, you know, my family, they always say we're a cult, and it gets to me. Yeah. But I was reminded of this verse as I was writing this sermon, and I think that's going to be one of, my, one of my life verses. You know, let no man despise thee. Just do it because the Lord wants you to do it. Do it because it's right. Now, the fourth, the fourth point, the fourth reason why people say that we're a cult comes from a guy named Andrew Schluter <laughs> on YouTube. And I don't, I mean, he just called us a cult. I don't know exactly what he, he just put out a video when a cult comes to town. Yeah. <laughs> he never even explained why he thinks we're a cult. Yeah. Just never even explained it. So I'll just make one up for him. You believe in one gospel. Okay, and this guy believes in three Gospels in the New Testament. He believes in the Gospel of the Kingdom, the Gospel of the Grace of God, and the Everlasting Gospel. I'm going to prove to you in four verses that this guy is an idiot because he believes in three Gospels in the New Testament. Four verses. Matthew 24. Go to Matthew 24. Now, everybody knows about Matthew 24. Who does not know about Matthew 24? <laughs> Watch after the tribulation. <laughs> Matthew 24. Matthew 24, 14. All right. So this is Jesus speaking. You got a red letter Bible. That's how it works. Matthew 24, verse 14. I'm going to go real slow just in case he watches this. <laughs> verse 14, Matthew 12. Obviously, he doesn't agree with our points on this passage, but this one should be clear to everybody. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So the gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached to the whole world, and then the end will come. He says that the gospel of the kingdom is different than Paul's gospel. Okay, do, Paul does call it his gospel. That's, that's a whole other thing. I'm not going to explain that. But he thinks that the, the gospel, the way to heaven that Paul preached, is different than the gospel of the kingdom. Okay? Now, the reason why I use this verse is because it says, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto, in all the world. I don't know. I think that happened in the day of Pentecost. <clears throat> Can someone give me some water? But I don't remember Jesus going around the whole world and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Okay? But 
Let's go on to my next point, which kind of brings in the gospel of the kingdom. Acts 20. Told you I was going to do this in, thank you, in four verses, Acts 20. And this kind of bleeds into the second gospel, the gospel of the grace of God. So we just read the Matthew 24, the gospel of the kingdom has to be preached all the world. Okay, which, you know, I, I believe it's the same gospel, you know, and I don't, I don't see any reason. I think that verse kind of supports what we believe, that there's only one gospel. But Acts 20, verse 24, this is Paul, okay, this is Paul's gospel. This is the gospel of the grace of God. Acts 20, verse 24. It says, but none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So here's the second gospel he believes in. But let's keep reading. Verse 25. And now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the what? Kingdom. Kingdom. The kingdom of God. So... Is the gospel of the grace of God and the kingdom of God the same? Yes. So, it seems like it. Seems like it. Go to Galatians 1. I think that's like the strongest support. I don't think I need any other verses. Amen. The gospel of the grace of God and the kingdom of God are synonymous in that, in that passage of scripture. And it's funny because I think that's the only time the gospel of the grace of God, that specific quote, is even mentioned. Someone wants to check. Because I'm pretty sure that it's like either one of two. But anyways, Paul clearly defines it by saying it's the kingdom of God. Yeah. Okay, the gospel of the kingdom. What other kingdom would he be talking about? <laughs> you know what I mean? The gospel of the kingdom is the gospel of the kingdom of God. It's clear as day. But anyways, Galatians 1, are you already there? Galatians 1. This is going into disproving the everlasting gospel. The point I'm trying to make is that all these Gospels are exactly the same. Yeah. All right? Galatians 1, starting in verse 8. But though we or in what? Angel, Angel from where? Heaven. Heaven. Preach any other Gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Okay, so this is an angel from heaven yeah. preaching a different Gospel. Go to Revelation 14. This is where he gets the terminology the everlasting gospel yeah. is where he gets it. And let's see who's bringing this everlasting gospel. Revelation 14, verse 6. And I saw another angel fly. Oh, what? An angel, yeah. right? Yes. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of where? Heaven. Having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Let this angel be accursed. <laughs> no. This is the same gospel. Yeah. Because if it wasn't, this angel has the wrong gospel. Yeah. You see what I'm trying to mean? Yeah. The, this angel is either bringing a false gospel or the real gospel. There's only one option. If we read Galatians 1, it says, Let no, not, not an angel, how does it word it? But if any other man, if any, uh, whatever, y'all, y'all, we read it. Sorry, let me go back. <laughs> I'm all mixed up up here. But it says, But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you that, that then you have received, let him be a curse. An angel from heaven. Either this angel is preaching the same gospel or a different gospel. All right? So that is pretty much all I had. Does anyone think we're a cult? Good. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Let's go through all the points again one more time. If this is a cult, our pastor is a false prophet. I think I proved without a shadow of a doubt that our pastor is not a false prophet. He's qualified to preach. He's qualified to be here. He's qualified to lead us and be a pastor. Point number two, we have one authority. This is our final authority, the King James Bible. We have no other books, no other men that teach us otherwise. This is our final authority. Uh, we have an open door policy where everything is out in the open and Everything that we believe is on the internet. You can find it. We went over what people say about us. Why would we be a cult? But what they believe is a good reason to call us a cult. 
you're hateful, you're judgmental, you're so different, you believe in one gospel. But we have a basis in scripture for everything that we believe. Everything. You know, if, if you want to call us a cult, then you'd have to ignore everything that I just brought up. And I think those are some good points, personally. You know, I wrote it. But I think those are good points. And I think that if you show anyone this who honestly cares about you or just the truth in general, I think they come to the realization, maybe this isn't a cult. Maybe they're just hateful. You know? Maybe they're just judgmental. And I'll stop calling them a cult because that makes me judgmental. Yeah. But... You know, if this is a cult, I guess we'll see when we get to heaven because we believe on Jesus. You know, we'll see who put Jesus first. We'll see who holds to the truth and believes the words of God. We'll see who has the rewards and the crowns, who's able to even cast anything at Jesus' feet. Because some of these people, when they call us a cult, it's often from people who are doing nothing for God. Nothing. You know, they don't even go to any church. They think we're a cult because... They literally know nothing about anything. They're fools. And, you know, hopefully some of the things that I was able to show you, when they call you a cult, when they say we're a cult, and I don't think anyone here gets really discouraged, but I'd hope that you'd remember this if it ever gets that bad where you'd ever think about leaving. Because that's the main thing. I don't want anyone to leave. I want us to continue and soul win and learn. And I'd hope you remember this. When someone calls us a cult, just stick, stick it out. Let no man despise thee. It's because God said it, not me. I didn't come up with this stuff. I'm not smart enough. You know, the Bible says it. Anyways, let's let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer.